Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the San Francisco 49ers 2018 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. And in this video today, uh, we're going to go over uh, all the draft picks that the 49ers made and look at them through the lens of data and analytics to see how they compare to past players based on production and athleticism data. Uh, if you are new to the channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. So with all that stuff out of the way, uh, let's get to the picks in this draft. So with the first pick of the uh, of the draft for the 49ers, they took uh, Mike uh, McGlinkey, uh, the offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. Uh, when you look at his athleticism traits, he had a 40.88 uh, uh, explosive lower body strength score which is not that impressive when you look at the averages at the position. Uh, didn't do a speed score, didn't do a flexibility score to really say much. Uh, but the bottom line is I, I, the, the first pick of the draft is just not the best when you look at it from an athleticism standpoint. Did not hit anywhere, anywhere close to all pro potential, pro bowl potential, or starter potential when you look at the averages at the position. And I think the lack of additional testing also kind of puts his profile into doubt. Then, of course, we get to the next pick of the draft in Dante Pettis, wide receiver out of Washington. Uh, did not do any athleticism testing, so it's really hard to say much about him from an athleticism standpoint, but did have at least production data, 59.65 uh, in terms of his passing yardage market share production score. Did not hit five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, or three-time Pro Bowl uh, production traits, but did hit at least above the long-term starter threshold, which is basically every, the vast majority of long-term starting wide receivers since 1969 had at least a 58 or higher score. And when you look at the averages at the position in terms of the average all-pro score, average Pro Bowl score, and average starter score, as you can clearly see, Dante Pettis is just woefully below what those averages are. Um, in many ways, I think Dante Pettis at best can become a long-term starter. I think you're looking at a guy that could have a, a, a decent career as sort of a slot wide receiver, uh, if you will, um, but definitely somebody that has very kind of low, high-end upside, more so a guy that could become a long-term starter, um, but that's about it when it comes to his profile. Then, of course, we get to Fred Warner, linebacker out of BYU. Uh, when you get to his production data, 51.91 in terms of solo tackle data, 100% of multiple all-pro linebackers, had at least a 90 or higher score since 1989. And uh, multiple Pro Bowl linebackers had at least a 77 or higher score. So Fred Warner does not have multiple All-Pro, multiple Pro Bowl potential, but he did hit at least above the starter threshold of 20.5. But when you look at the starter average of 79.20, his production is very troublesome to say the least when you, when you think of it from that kind of perspective. But he does have decent athleticism traits, 78.51 in terms of explosiveness. 63.41 in terms of speed and 78.06 in terms of flexibility for his size. Essentially has close to Pro Bowl potential in terms of his athleticism traits, but just doesn't quite have uh, Pro Bowl potential in terms of his production data. So in many ways, I think Fred Warner has a good chance to become a long-term starting linebacker, um, but not necessarily someone with a very high chance of becoming a Pro Bowl to All-Pro player. Then, of course, we get to Devar uh, Tavarius Moore, uh, defensive safety out of Southern Miss. Uh, very good production data, 88.49 in terms of solo tackle data, 88.64 in terms of interception data, and 88.36 in terms of pass deflection data. Essentially has Pro Bowl potential in terms of his production traits. When you look at the averages at the position, looks closer to a long-term starter than a Pro Bowl player because of his pass deflection data. Um, when you look at the averages, but still pretty strong overall profile. And when you look at his athleticism traits, 88.40 in terms of explosiveness, 97.57 in terms of speed and 76.64 in terms of uh, flexibility or balance for his size. Doesn't quite have all pro or pro bowl athleticism traits in terms of flexibility, but does have a very good explosion score, very good speed score, very good production all around. I think there's a very good shot that Tavarius Moore uh, becomes a long-term starting safety at the next level. Then, of course, we get to Kentavious Street, interior defense alignment at NC State. Uh, when you look at his production data, 37.26 in terms of solo tackle data, 17.32 in terms of sack data, and, and um, 30.25 in terms of tackle for loss. Uh, doesn't have all pro or pro bowl potential in terms of the bottom and thresholds of the position, uh, but does have some potential to be a long-term starter. 
Uh, and then when you look at the averages at the position, uh, woefully below what the averages are in terms of solo tackle sack and TFL data and doesn't have any athleticism testing because he was injured during the process. Um, I think when it comes to street, I'm looking at a guy again, um, very unlikely to become a long-term starter, but definitely a guy that could be a backup slash rotational player for you. And of course, you get to DJ Reed, cornerback out of Kansas State. Very good production data, 96.08 in terms of his solo tackle data, 99.29 in terms of pass deflection data. Really, really impressive overall production traits, as you can clearly see. And when it comes to athleticism data, 73.1 um, uh, in terms of his uh, explosiveness, 56.60 in terms of speed, and 82.72 uh, uh, in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't quite have Pro Bowl potential athleticism because of his speed score, but very impressive in terms of explosiveness and flexibility. Has a very good shot to become a long-term starter. I think this is by far my favorite day three pick that the 49ers made from a from a uh, athleticism production standpoint. Then, of course, you get to Marcel Harris, defensive safety out of Florida. Uh, when you look at his production data, 55.22 in terms of solo tackle data, 49.95 in terms of interception data, and 5.74 in terms of pass deflection data. Uh, doesn't quite hit all pro potential or pro bowl potential in terms of both, um, or actually all three categories, really. Uh, and then, of course, when you look at the averages of the position, it kind of becomes even further the issues that Marcel Harris has in terms of production and didn't really have any athleticism testing either uh, for, at the Combine or Pro Day, um, at least from my, what I was able to gather so far. Um, in many ways, I think Marcel Harris, again, is a guy similar to Street, most likely a backup uh, slash rotational player, but not a guy that could, can realistically become a long-term starter because of a lack of production or a lack of athleticism traits. Then, of course, you get to Julian Taylor, interior defensive lineman out of Temple. Um, and you get to his athleticism trait, 72.30 in terms of explosiveness, 71.70 in terms of speed, and um, uh, 67.45 in terms of flexibility for his size. Pretty decent athleticism traits across the board. Has, has at least the bottom and threshold in terms of all pro potential in terms of his athleticism traits. But, um, but we'll have to see ultimately what happens with him. I think what you're looking at is a guy who's a pretty good athlete, but we'll see what happens. And then the last player in the draft, um, by far my favorite player from this draft, uh, from a data perspective and a film perspective, is Richie James, uh, wide receiver out of Middle Tennessee State. And when you look at his production data, 90.18 in terms of passing yards, mark share production, pretty much hits above the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, and long-term starter threshold. Uh, when you look at the averages at the position, he looks closer to a Pro Bowl player then an all-pro player when you look at the averages, but still very good overall production profile. And when you look at athleticism traits, 37.26 in terms of explosiveness, 46.55 in terms of speed, and 59.87 in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, in many ways, when it comes to wide receivers, you only need one 54 or higher athleticism trait in order to have all pros so as Pro Bowl potential. And Richie James has at least one trait in terms of his flexibility testing. Um, so in many ways, Richie James has uh, all pro slash Pro Bowl potential due to his athleticism traits and his combination with the production. Um, so again, very, very solid all-around pick when it comes to Richie James. So overall, when you look at the 49ers draft class, uh, honestly, it's not my favorite draft class. I think that the players with the highest chance to be successful based on data, Richie James uh, is one of those players, DJ Reed is one of those players, Tavarius Moore. Uh, is one of those players. Um, and then everybody else is kind of a question mark here, uh, either due uh, to athleticism testing, due to production data, etc. So um, we'll ultimately see what happens with this particular draft class. It wouldn't be surprising if the offensive tackle that they took in the first round ends up becoming a long-term starter. It's just his athleticism traits. There's just not a lot on paper to really say much with him. Um, and his explosion score wasn't really that impressive either. So um, again, you're, you're basing that evaluation entirely on film, um, which is always not the wisest thing to do sometimes. Um, but overall, um, not a terrible class. There definitely are some, some successful players that could come out of this class if they're given a shot and a chance to compete. Um, but definitely uh, not that impressive when you look at the early picks that they took in terms of the first, second, and third round to a certain extent. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so you're always reminded 
when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.